All right, we are live. We are live. Yes. <laughs> Let me check to make sure we are good. And hello, everyone. Good evening. Happy Wednesday. Pray each of you are having an amazing, amazing week. Um, I'm so excited today to be with you all for Bible study. I'm sure you've seen the many posts that I've been posting about it and, and all the announcements. And it's because I am extremely excited because for the first time, we'll have a special guest that you can see right here with me on, uh, yes. on Zoom. And I'll give her a proper introduction uh, in a moment here. But just want to welcome, welcome you all to Bible study amongst friends and really a place where we come to fellowship, to learn more about who God is. And so this is certainly one that you're going to want to share. So definitely share, 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 share it on your, your Facebook feed, share it in your text messages, share it in your email, um, but share this and, and get the word out. And um, yeah, so before I jump into who this beautiful guest that I have with me today, I'm going to um, open up in prayer. And so, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. God, thank you for thank you for bringing us here to just share our testimony, share our stories, and again to just learn more about who you are. God, I pray that as we we um, as we speak today, Lord, that it will be the words that you have for us to share. That it'll be more of you, less of us. And we just thank you for each person that's going to listen to this video, God, that they may be blessed and that they will receive the message that you have for them. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, let me share this to my page real quick and then we'll get started. So as I said here today, I'm extremely excited. And I'm super excited because this awesome woman of God, who I would give a proper introduction, uh, she's been in my life for, it seems like forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like we, we go, Basically. yeah, we go way back to the way back, uh, <laughs> boys and girls club days and, and all that jazz. Even though I don't remember much from back then, but you know, I, I remember her, so that's what counts, right? And so, <laughs> Um, as you all know, for the month of um, August, I was about to say September, for the month of August, we're talking about spiritual strongholds. And we've gone deep into what are spiritual strongholds. We talked about uh, last Bible study, talked about how to break them. So we went deep into that as well. And so for this Bible study, we're actually going to have Kendra. So Kendra is our guest speaker, and she's going to share her story about um, the stronghold that she went through and just a little bit about her journey, how she was over to, able to overcome it and, and kind of what she does now. And so to jump into it, I, like <laughs> I want to read her bio. Um, and so her bio says, Kendra, Doug Kendra Dublin, I was about to call you Douglas, like you're my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> we family. <laughs> we, yeah, we family. Kendra Dublin is a Christian life coach, author, speaker, and the owner of God's Perspective for Me, LLC. She helps Christians release past wounds so they can turn their testimony into their online ministry and answer God's call through purposeful preparation. Uh, Kendra's story of alcoholism has made her an expert in overcoming difficulties and making lifestyle changes. She wants to give hope where there is fear and where pain resides and where pain resides is knowledge for achievement. And then it says Kendra has written two volumes of God's perspective for me. She's a collaborator of the resistance book with Becky Davis and is currently working on her fourth public publication. So congrats on that. I know that's a, a, yes. a big achievement for you <laughs> as well. So kudos. Um, hey, Miss Ernest. And then it also says that she's also a contributor for the online magazine, Beauty and the Gospel, based out of Johannesburg, South Africa. So she is international. <laughs> well, it, so it says Kendra is the founder of Millennials on Purpose. So if you all see me um, posting that group and share that, that this is her group that she started some time ago. And so she is the founder of it and a collaborator of the well communicators environments created to uplift women 
on their road to ministry. And it says Kendra has spoken at various conferences, um, symposiums, and summits for women and millennials. So if you need her, book her. She's available. Today. And, <laughs> what, today. <laughs> then it says Kendra hopes her journey of alcoholism to trusting God fully will inspire everyone to do the same. She wishes to lead a legacy of excellence in action in Christ. It says, as he spoke in John 434, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. And so just want to welcome her uh, here today. And one of the reasons, I mean, there's many reasons why I'm excited, but one of the reasons why I'm extremely excited is because she played a key role in me getting where I am today. Uh, if you all heard me share my my testimony on my page and Part of my testimony, I talk about that that uh, that night in I think it was May of 2020, to where I saw this post that said, "Are you worthy?" And my response was no. And so uh, <laughs> it, it was it was actually God used her to um, basically start that process of getting back close with God. Um, I went through the coaching program that she used to have, and she certainly blessed me and has been a mentor for me. Uh, for the past few years. So one reason why I'm extremely excited to have her here, many of them. But we're going to dive into it, uh, dive into her story, because as I mentioned, we've been talking about spiritual strongholds, and I've given you all a little meat around uh, what they are, how to identify them, how to overcome them. But I think it also helps to hear someone's um, personal testimony of what they experienced what they went through and, and how they were able to uh, walk in freedom and, and even in the place that she is today. And so where I just want to start with this, Kendra, and I'm going to jump right into it, is for, for you to just tell us a little bit about your upbringing. So a little bit about your background, your childhood, you know, what was that like? Upbringing. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a PK. So <laughs> Uh, I was definitely raised uh, in church, um, pretty much there all my life. Um, I would say the one thing uh, aside from or different that most pre uh, pre Ks would say um, is that they always had people on them uh, in, in a sense where they actually had to like try to perform in a sense or they were different from the other kids. And my parents didn't do that. Um, they raised me in like a very well balanced approach to Christianity and to Jesus. Um, so I grew up not just being told no. I grew up being told what does it mean when you actually sin? What does that mean spiritually and physically and for you in the future? <laughs> um, so I, I think all of that in a sense did prepare me for what I did today. Um, but I grew up just regular Christian family um, with Christian values. Um, and going to school, uh, sharing the gospel at school, bringing my Bible to school. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I remember me, me and one of my friends, Ashley, um, in, in Spanish class, we would be going back and forth as to what was the right teaching in the Bible. <laughs> oh, wow. So, you know, I've always been, I've always been for God. Um, uh, because I hadn't gone through anything yet, I, I would say self-righteous as well. But um, I definitely grew up with, with knowing God um, and then my parents um showed that to me okay and then for those who didn't get the pk she was a preacher's kid <laughs> that's, what, that's what the pk stands for uh, so basically the background that you have is you were in church um probably very much involved in the church uh and it's probably in your story it's actually very similar to mine to where um i, I grew up i felt like I might as well put a, a sleeping bag for us in the back because we never left <laughs> but um having having that foundation and, and let me ask you this uh, how did that found foundation uh in god how did that help you even you know we'll get to your journey but how did that help you throughout your journey and even into to now um it helped me to know that there was someone there even in my mess. So I think that thought process didn't allow me to die. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe that knowing that God was true, God was real. I was the one who was messed up because I, I was always told, you be honest. 
towards God and what you think <laughs> um, yeah. about yourself and to God. And I think that just being honest about, I know I'm wrong. I know I'm living in sin. I know I'm cray cray right now, but yeah. God is there. You know, he, he, he's here. So I, I truly believe that my foundation uh, in knowing God and knowing Jesus. And I, I, I truly believe that that's what didn't allow me to like literally die in my sins. Um, just knowing that God was faithful, although I can't, I can't say that my values and my walk <laughs> look like that, <laughs> but I just knew he's, he's here. Yeah. And I, I think that's just to add to that. I think sometimes that's one of the tricks the enemy will try to do is he'll try to shame us and to make us feel like we're in the journey alone, uh, especially for those of, of you that are listening that were brought up in the church. Um, so where you, you know, you were rooted in God, but then at some point in your life, you strayed away from, from that, uh, from whatever you learned at foundation. And sometimes the enemy will try to tell us that, hey, because you're, you sin or because of this place that you're in, you know, God doesn't love you. In my case, you're not worthy, uh, which is what I went through. And I love it how you said, just remembering that God is with us through that entire process. And so for everyone up here, just knowing that even if you have a spiritual stronghold present, even if you have something that you're going through, even if you're in a place to where you don't have that closeness of with God that that uh, you, you you should have, it's important to always remember that one, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And so he still loves you, but also know that he's still with you throughout your journey. Yes, yes. And some people, I, I've, I've heard things in the past where some people, um, sometimes even pastors and preachers will say, you know, well, God has left you and it's a lie. It, it, is, it is a total lie. So if you have been fed that or been told that, um, it is a lie. <laughs> you know, pray for that person and what they're teaching or thinking or whatever. Um, but just know that that God is, is there. He is near. He is omnipresent. I, I'm, he's everything. Um, so th there may be blessings that should be coming your way that, that are halted, <laughs> but got, got, got it. Yeah. And I'll say, last thing I'll say about that too, is if you, if someone tells you something like that, ask them where it is in the Bible. And that way, you know, if you're, if you're someone that, especially if you're, um, I, I would call more of a, a baby in Christ, you're just getting started. And in my case, I, I consider my a baby at one point because even though I grew up in church, I strayed away for 10 years. And so when I came back to God fully last year, I was, I, I was telling, K, I call it KW. So I was telling Kendra, I was like, I feel like I'm reading the Bible for the first time because I don't remember all the stories. So if, if you are new in Christ and someone's sharing something with you, it's okay to ask, hey, where is that in the Bible? So mm -hmm. just a good practice. So as I, from your intro, you know, it, it talks about the, the spiritual stronghold that you have, you know, was addiction, was alcoholism. And in, in the Bible study, we talked about, so the, the first week we talked about um, how spiritual strongholds form and talked about how, and, and just some of the things we talked about, you know, they can form the gates of the spirit. We talked about how it starts in the mind. And eventually that thing is going to come out through your actions. And so it, it may start with that thought, but then it comes out. So how did your relationship with alcohol start? And I call it relationship because ultimately, when you think about a stronghold, it's something that you're tied up with. And right. It's, so essentially, you have a relationship with that thing. So how did your relationship with alcohol start and, and what kind of led to it? Yeah, alcohol was definitely my friend for a while. It might even be my best thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um... Yeah, it all came out of just what you just said about the Bible studies that you've had previously. Like after I left high school and went into college, um, I didn't keep that same relationship with, with God. And because of that, I probably went like weeks until months of not even reading his word. And so I found myself um, thinking, as you said, start with the mind, that I'm okay. I didn't say that. But I know I was thinking that I'm okay because I didn't open up my Bible. <laughs> like I have had enough knowledge of God, even in my, my small 18 years, 19 years, I've had enough knowledge of him and, and I'm okay. Like it, it, everything is good. I, I can move forward. And what, what I've been taught is, you know, is it. And so I kind of was putting a cap on what I 
the knowledge that I gained of God. And so after I put that cap on it, it, little by little, my thought process started to change. And so by the time I got to what, 21, um, I had been a, a virgin all my life. And that was one thing that I had, you know, promised God that I would be a virgin to, until I got married. And when uh, I, I became 21, right, when, right before I became 21, I ended up having sex with this guy that I was dating. And prior to it, I was entertaining the thought, the mind, I was entertaining the thought that maybe I would have sex with him. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I think I will, I think I should. And then one of my friends was like, girl, that man fine, you better, you better get that. <laughs> so, you know, the people you hang with too can, can influence some things. Mm, but yeah. yeah, it was just that thought process of, okay, maybe so. And then of course I wasn't reading the Bible, you know, but by then, you know, I, I would go to, I would go to church, but you know, can't sustain you if you ain't at home reading the Bible. So that's really where it all started. When I had sex with the guy that I was dating, and it took a couple of months for me to actually process that I had sex. And I believe it was because I built my identity on being a virgin. And that's what made me different. I didn't build my identity on me being a Christian, but me being a virgin. Mm. So when I did that, and I wasn't a virgin anymore, and I was like everybody else in a sense, everybody that I preached to in a sense, you know, everybody that I brought my Bible to, <laughs> yeah. um, it was like, I'm the same as everybody else. So why does it matter? If I had sex this one time, but why does, it, why does it matter if I have sex two, three, four, or five times now? And so once it actually like it processed in my brain that I had sex outside of the, the promise that I made to God, I went straight to the bottle. Like when, when I say maybe hung out a few times with friends and like, oh yeah, we're gonna get a little drink, you know, we we right there at that 20, 20 to 21 range. Oh, we're gonna get a drink and have somebody who's 25 get us a drink and we'll just all sip on it, you know, thinking we're doing something. And so it was like once that hit, it was like literally all hell broke loose it was I, I literally probably my worst year was like the first year the first two years because it was just an instant like it I don't I don't remember it like growing it just it just went <laughs> you know I, I started drinking all of a sudden I found myself drinking uh every single day um in that year's time frame um because I was just a totally different person than who I believed I should be. So that was my transition from the high school that is bringing her a Bible, you know, to school to uh, a few years later, having that pride, uh, which led to, to my addiction. Yeah, you, you said a, a lot of good things um, there. I think one of the first things that you talked about was how your relationship with God um, wasn't as existent in the beginning. And so one thing that we know is where it talks about the enemy, he's, he's like a, you know, thief the night, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. And so knowing that God, not God, um, Satan and, and not, you know, Satan, he doesn't want material things. He doesn't want your car. He doesn't want your house. He wants your relationship with God. And so you talked about how um, even getting to a point to where you think, oh, I'm good. You know, I, I read the word sometimes, or I've, I've grown up in church, so I'm in a place to where I'm good. And when you stop doing that, it opened up the door uh, for something to enter because uh, essentially you were in a place to where you were spiritually weak. Um, right. And one of, one of the other things I like that you said was about being careful who you surround yourself around. We, we talked about that in Bible study because the example we gave was like King Solomon to where he was on fire for God and then as soon as he married outside of his people, which God had forbid them to do that. But as soon as he married outside of his people, he started building altars for other gods. And right. so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you for sharing that. And, and so the follow up question I have to that to that is at what point, though, you, you talked about how it it was a habit that formed. And so we know strongholds. It may start with a thought. It may start with just something you do periodically but eventually you find yourself in that same never-ending cycle and so um when did you realize that houston we have a problem like what was that that point that point for you that, that you realized that you had a problem and how did it further affect your relationship with god yeah okay so i want to say just one quick thing it's <laughs> crazy how we think that we we can be okay with not talking to God 
mm-hmm. because you can switch teams real quick in a matter of 30, 60, 90 days. So it's, it's it really is like no game. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to, for me, it, it, it took weeks, months, and a uh, couple of years, but it, it's very simple and easy to go from one person to the next as Solomon, who was the wisest man, as Mel said, uh, who was just on a whole different level was starting to build altars to other gods. So um, just feel the need to say that. So when um, your question was about when I figured out like what was wrong or what was happening, uh, yeah. it was one night where I was two bottles in. It was somewhere in between the first two years. Like I really couldn't tell you, you know, I want to say maybe the first year, year and a half, but I was two bottles in and Holy Spirit kept saying, you need to call your dad. And I was, I was crying. I was in a funk. I'm like, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. You know, it's, it's the, 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 the drunk cry and talking, whatever. Like I'm not where I'm supposed to be and, da, 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 da. and I'm just crying and crying. And Holy Spirit says, call your dad. And I'm just like, uh, okay. So for one, <laughs> I am not in a state to be calling anybody, let alone my dad, but he should have been the per- first person that I should have gone to, obviously, because if anybody knows him, which well, you know him, he's a prevention specialist and he went through alcoholism when he was younger. He should have been the first person I would have been like, okay, dad, I'm, I'm having some issues here. Like I, I need you to, to, to help me out. Um, but I didn't do that. So I ended up calling him and saying, you know, I, I'm in a bad place. I'm in a bad state. Uh, you know, he kept, he was telling me, you know, read the book of John over the next 30 days. Um, and so I, I did, but that was the initial time where I just realized like everything was like catching up to me, um, in a sense. And, um, when it started to catch up to me, it was just like, how can I actually handle this? Um, yeah, I was like, how can I actually handle this? And it, Holy Spirit just kept saying, call your dad. So by the time he said it uh, another time, I actually called him. Um, and we talked, he told me to read the Bible um, over the next 30 days of the book of John. And that actually stopped me from um, drinking every single day. Because by this time I was drinking every day. But that stopped me from drinking every single day. And it kind of went back into like binge moments. And then, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then it went back to binge moments. <laughs> uh, but that was like the initial things that I can remember. Um, that was like the first warning wake up call. I, I didn't and I didn't really heed to it other than not drinking every single day but that was like the first moment that I was like okay this is this I, I didn't gone way too far yeah so in in that moment um how did it further affect your relationship with God um do you feel like things between like did it push you to God initially did it push you away from God or what was what was that relationship like during that time of I realize I have a problem. Uh, maybe you were at a point to where you were like, okay, I need to get help. Maybe I don't know how to get help. Or what, what was that like? Um, I didn't even process it like that. I, when I was starting to read the Bible, like I said, that stopped me from actually drinking every single day. Um, I didn't think I needed help um, in a sense of I need to get outside help. I, it, that thought process never came to me. I know I needed God to help me, you know, in some kind of way, but um outside help no so it that moment drew me closer to God but because I had not reconciled my sin um because I hadn't laid my burdens down to him (laughs) because you know I was still like this back and forth teeter-totter or whatever you want to call it tug of war kind of thing happening um it brought me closer to God but then I was it was like this the whole thing was spiritual warfare, but but at, now it's like I'm going back and forth. Like I said, now I'm, I'm binging, then I'm not. I'm like, okay, I'm not drinking every day, so that's better, you know. And then for a few months, I'm okay, and all of a sudden, I'm binging. And then for like eight straight months, I'm back in that same cycle. Um, so that's what was happening. Like I realized, you know, I, I had an issue, but at the time, it wasn't like these outside forces or people could help me. I just knew, okay, God, well, you know. The scripture is is real and I see it. Um, But now that I'm getting a better understanding of what's going on with me, it's too much for me to process and I need my drink. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting that you said that because I I think in even in my journey, there are parts to where I 
do for me, you know, you, you know, my testimony where it was about homosexuality and, and sex. And so I knew I was in a place of sin. I knew I was doing wrong, but I wasn't in a position yet to where I was ready to admit it and to get help. And so I, I think that, that one, sometimes we try to control our own, like even in your case, to where it's, it's, oh, well, I'm going a, I'm to a do this so that I do this less. And it's almost like right. we're trying to control it ourselves, you know, whether it's, right. and, and for all of us, all of our, the strongholds we have in our life may be different. But when we tried, what I found was when I try to control it myself, I always end it back at that same point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like things would be, and for me, it was, it was literally like a, a merry-go-round to where you, mm-hmm. you have, you know, you're in a merry-go-round you, you have, or at the beach, you have that one, one um, landscape you're looking at, that mm-hmm. focal point. And then somehow when you go back around, you always end right back at that same focal point. And yeah. it's because we're trying to take things into our own hands. Exactly. That's exactly what I did. I, I tried to like self-diagnose and self-heal. And it's just like, that don't work. I don't know what you thought you were going to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, and, and that's what I did for, for years, which is why, you know, it went on for seven years um, because I had this back and forth of trying to control trying to control it and I didn't even realize like I knew I had a problem but it wasn't until my dad actually was doing a presentation because again he's a prevention specialist and he was showing what an alcoholic is like what the intake looks like from the the person who binges each weekend mm. to the person that is just full-blown if you binge every single weekend you're an alcoholic even if you don't drink for five days you are literally an alcoholic <laughs> whether you want to call it functioning, you know, until you get to whatever, but it wasn't until he, he was showing these different things. And I was just like, Oh my goodness. Like I go <laughs> way over that <laughs> on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that kind of like, in a sense, put the label on it, but then I said, I'd be okay for a little while because I kept, like you said, trying to control the narrative, trying to control what God was doing. And he was warning me at multiple times. Um, but I just would not, fully surrender and submit to the to the change that it would take yeah um yeah I I can identify with that so much so when do you what was the turning point for you you know when did you get to that place because right now you're in that place of oh now I'm aware because sometimes we're not even it, it takes for either for us to hit our face maybe literally but in your case but hit our face <laughs> in the cement Sometimes it takes for us to run into that wall for us to realize, okay, I have a problem, but, but, or I have a stronghold that's present in my life, what essentially is a problem. And so for you, when you got to that place of first, you were there where you were like, okay, I, I'm going to try to do it myself. And then you're like, Ooh, I realized the problem I have. So what was that turning point to where you realized, Hey, I need to actually make a change. Yeah. So that was like six years um, into it. And it was when I was actually dating this guy um, that I thought at the time that I may possibly marry in the future. And like first person I had loved. (laughs) And so as we were getting closer, it was just like, almost like flashing to the future. It was like, how are you going to be anybody's wife and you are drunk? How are you going to be anybody's mom and you are drunk? It's just like, before you even get to that, you need to get right with God. Like, it was like this, this relationship was pointing me back to God because the reality of a transition that it was like, it ain't just about me anymore. Um, it was like somebody else may be a part of my mess. Um, and so that was like the initial thing that was like, okay, I really need to get back right with God. And so it was this back and forth of me going back into the scripture again (laughs) and trying to read. And then also like me and him are having sex and I'm still drinking. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to slow down, but it's like, again, it's, I was back and forth, back and forth and back and forth. By this time I'm like, okay, I I gotta do better. Started reading the Bible a little bit. He was like, all right, well, what, what, what about you? You know, yeah. (laughs) But it's like, he didn't didn't grow up like that uh, for one. And two, you know, he didn't meet the sober kindred. He met the the drunkard that was just 
you know? So it's like, how, how am I going to, you know, ask him to change when that ain't who I presented at first? So, you know, for me, it was like, all right, well, after a while, you know, we were kind of going back and forth about some things. And then it was just like, God was showing me I had to move forward. And I, I truly believe like just that relationship was what started to point me back to God. And then day by day, I was reading the Bible and it was about four months and I was going back and forth with God, like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We had broken up. I was still end up being over his house a few days later uh, for that weekend or whatever. And it was just back and forth. And God said to me, you said you're going to live for me. Holy Spirit said, you said you're going to live for me. So what you going to do? And so that's when I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, uh, yeah. okay, I got to do this thing for real. I can't keep going back and forth with God. I can't be in my scripture one moment and not. I can't say I'm in my scriptures now and then I, I'm still trying to live the life I want to live. I'm, I'm being way too convicted. I'm here on Holy Spirit on a different level. It's just like, I just really fully need to submit. So that was about three or four months of me just literally going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then when God said, you need to get your life together. <laughs> he didn't yeah. say that. He said the other part. Yeah, that um, was, that was the, <laughs> yeah. That, that yeah. was the Kendra way. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that was, that was, <laughs> but one thing that I want to touch on that you said, first you said six years. So six years of you being in that place. And, and sometimes we're in those places for a long time time sometimes the things that we're carrying are things we've been carrying since childhood uh sometimes it and, and as you see in in your case Kendra it was generational because it was something that your dad battled with and now it was something that you were battling with and so just the process of carrying it and one thing that I've heard some people say is oh this is the way I am or or this is just how my family is or or it's almost like we we um, put on the jacket of what we're carrying and, and start to right. try to embrace it as an identity as to this is who I am. Right. But but in reality of who Christ created us to be, he created us to be that person that's without the um, the jacket where it talks about, you know, where God is, there's liberty. So there's right. freedom to walk with Christ. Um, and then what, one of the things I like that you said is you talked about trying to bring people with you how many times do we get on a journey i've i've tried you know god looking <laughs> look, look at me like that ain't your assignment what you doing <laughs> but you know sometimes we get to a place to where when we start on a journey and 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 even people that god has told us to leave alone <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. you need to leave this person alone i need you focus over here but we mm -hmm. think we're doing them justice by trying to bring them well god i'm i'm sharing uh your word <laughs> like, i'm talking to them about you so so that should be okay but right. in reality we're being disobedient to what god has told us to do so one thing for you mm -hmm. all that are listening is when you start your journey no matter if you're already you know you have a relationship with christ it's a new journey where god has told you going to ministry or whatever the case is there are times that you're going to have to leave people behind Okay. everyone is and it was actually one of my friends that told me that everyone is not built to go with you in the place that God has taken you so yes. anything that you want to add there before we jump into the next yeah yeah and I, I think that's a, a awesome thing to, to think about like uh, trying to bring someone with you is different from you saying hey god is on god has gotten me on a different path and and i'm praying for you if you want to get started with some scriptures here you go but i can't be with you you know i can't be at least right now i need i need time you know apart um because at least it, at least at least me in a sense trying to he actually came to christ you know within that next year and um but just trying to hold on to those relationships and trying to just stay there when God has already said no go, um, all it's going to do is is take away from possibly what God wants to even do with people, um, because you can be just as toxic for them as you think they are for you. <laughs> yeah, especially with the back and forth too. It right. Is, it, to me, is similar to just being on. I I joke with people, but I'm speaking truth. Where I said I was on a roller coaster and I was just holding on all the bumps, like going up and down. Right. But in reality, what we're doing is we're being toxic to ourselves and we're also being toxic to the other person that 
that um, whether it's a friend or whatever the case is, it's, it's, it's toxic on, on both parts. Right. Exactly. It's, and so want to jump into the next one here. So you talked a little bit about the, the process of, of, of to freedom, where you said you started reading your word and then got to the place where, where God said, you said you're going to live for me. And so one of the things that we talked about uh, was uh, Joshua and the Israelites, how they went to Jericho. And, you know, the instruction that, that God gave them there uh, in, in terms of, you know, walk around this one time for you know, X amount of days and on, you know, da 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 da, da. And so we know that their obedience and what they did, the loud shout they did, they did it exactly in the order that God told them to do led to the wall of Jericho falling down, which yeah. is very similar. You know, when you look up stronghold, stronghold definition is actually, is actually a fortress. So the mm -hmm. wall is coming down. So how, what was that moment where you realized I'm out of that place where I was? Like, what was, what was that moment of freedom and, and, and what was that one step that you took that maybe one or two steps that you took to, to get there? Yeah. So I was downtown with my parents because we were about to go see Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. It's, the dinosaurs are my favorite, y'all. It's my favorite movie. <laughs> I just bought this extended edition <laughs> of the last one. But yeah, so we were downtown. I think that's what it was. Either that or Star Wars. But we were downtown and we were about to go go to the movies. And while we were there, we got there too too early. And so we started walking down, um, maybe like half a mile down. And there was like a vendor space out there. And so as I walked up to it, there was a vendor space. Um, there was like quite a few. And then somebody and people were like drinking around. So I could start, I was starting to smell the alcohol. And so as I started smelling the alcohol, I was just like, mm, ugh, that's disgusting. Like what's, what, what's that smell? Like I knew the smell, but it was just like, ugh, that's, 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 that's disgusting. Like why, why are they drinking? You know, mm -hmm. so I'm walking around and I'm not even processing at the moment, but I'm just walking around. I'm like, because, you know, a year and a half prior to that, I've been like, well, my drink, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, I was there when I had that moment. I was like, hold up. Did I, did I really just say that? But it, it was too much in, in, in happening in the moment for me to process it. So by the time I got back home and, you know, I walked up to my, my, my bedroom, I was like, hold up. Did God deliver me? Like I've been praying all this time for God to deliver me from the taste that I like of alcohol, from the way it makes me feel, um, to the actions that I take when I drink it, um, to me just as you said, being my my friend, you know, all those years. And I was like, did God really just do that? I mean, I just started crying and thanking God and praising God, and I was like, God just did bring. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that, that was the moment that <clears throat> I had realized, and this was about a year after just getting into the Bible, getting into the word, um, getting into some ministries at church, and also um, helping Habitat for Humanity on the weekends, um, like once or twice a month, I would help them, uh, once a month, I help them on the weekends with cleaning and painting houses and all that kind of stuff. After doing that for like that, a little over a year, and being confronted with alcohol, because by then I hadn't been out or anything. Um, but it was just like, wow, like, God did it. <laughs> he, he answered my prayers. <laughs> yeah, that's that's amazing because I know that it was probably very difficult to walk away from that relationship and to leave him. But through your obedience of um, walking away, how God delivered you. And it, it sounds very similar to, you know, what I went through to where I just shifted my focus instead mm -hmm. of focus on that thing you know focus on that place I shifted my focus on God and furthering mm -hmm. my relationship with him and of course at that point he's like I want you to do one two three I need you to do this and mm -hmm. to where I didn't even realize that I was delivered until I was confronted with that thing again right <laughs> and so that's that's literally how what happened and sometimes that's a part of the test too is when you get to a place of when you're walking in deliverance, at some point you're going to get confronted with that thing again. But mm -hmm. if you, if you built your foundation in God, if you built that relationship with Him, if you if you really submitted to Him, when that thing comes back, it's going to be like go somewhere. Nah. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
You had the wrong door. I'll see you later. Right. Exactly. Right. Try that with somebody else. <laughs> right. right. Let Find them them. And by the way, <laughs> you all that are watching have questions. Feel free to put your questions in the chat because we'll um uh, well we can ask your questions as well. So I uh, definitely put your questions in the chat if you have them. Um, and I see we do have some people on Facebook that are watching as well. Um, Devonna had had a, a a comment before. She said that's real too. So, <laughs> definitely some good stuff, um, good conversation going on. But the 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 next question that I don't think many people talk about, and this was one that that I when God delivered me, I was like, God, not many people talk about the journey after freedom. So after you realize that you have been delivered from from alcoholism and from alcohol, what was that journey like? Like, what was that first year like after walking in in, in freedom? Yeah, so that that first year, I can't even say the necessarily what it felt like. I just knew like I was on the right track and God has something for me, but I, I really didn't focus on what he had for me. I focused on, I need to stay the course. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of like had my thing where I call like the stay in practice thing, which is read your Bible regularly, uh, be a part of a ministry at church and uh, uh, practice your, your, your gifts, develop your gifts. And so I was almost in a mode. I wasn't in the mode of like, well, God, what's my purpose? It was like, what you've already shown me I need to do, I just need to do it. Uh, so it, it was like literally every every weekend, um, not every weekend, but every week I would go to um, the lake and I would write. It's like, all right, well, God, I know he gifted me to write, so I need to start writing. <laughs> you know, uh, so I started doing that. And anytime, like in my phone, if I had a, a thought, like while I was at work or whatever, I'd be like, okay, let me go to my notes and let me go ahead and add this thought. So by the time I would go back to the lake, then I knew, okay, you got these five thoughts here. You need, you need to complete. Holy Spirit, help me. <laughs> and yeah. so I was writing songs at, at the time. So I was just like, okay, I'm writing. Like I wrote a song this week. Okay, in a couple of weeks, I'll finish up this song and I'll finish up this song. And so it, it really was like, I was walking in the freedom of God without, in a sense, the, the labels that we have of like, where's purpose? Well, what is it? What's going on? It was like, I literally was just walking how God needed me to walk. Um, and that actually being disciplined prepared me in my standard practice method prepared me for for the book um, so it, it wasn't it wasn't this major thing in a sense because it was like you just need to do what you need to do <laughs> um, so yeah so I just kept walking and kept walking and kept walking um, and, and I, I believe that when God healed me from deliver me from food poisoning was it sounds weird was even more awakening for me um, because about it within 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 two years I had I had food poisoning uh previous like a year, a year prior and when I got it again my body started to shake and my body shook the first time for like eight for eight hours straight until I fell asleep like I was up like literally all night. And I think I got maybe like an hour's worth of sleep, woke up and was just like feeling like death for like a whole week. And the second time it came back around, my body started to shake and I was like, oh no, it was like 10 minutes in. And I'm like, I ate something I shouldn't have eaten. I don't know what it was, but I started to feel it. And as I was praying and God just helped me to endure this. I don't know what, what's happening. I don't know what's going on, but help me just to en endure what's happening. And Holy Spirit said, why are you asking for endurance when I can deliver you? Why are you asking for perseverance right now when I can deliver you? And I literally said, well, I, God, I don't know why, but you can heal me <laughs> and deliver me right now, God. So I'm calling on you to deliver me. I walk up to my room. By the time I get upstairs, my body stops shaking, period, completely. And I felt a slight tiredness in the morning of whatever was it, what was in my body, but that was it. So when God delivered me from the food poisoning that night, I was like, you, you can and do everything. <laughs> it, it was like, and I believe it was slightly different from him uh, delivering me from alcoholism because it was like, th th there was no journey. It was like a moment's time, I'm gonna deliver you and heal you right now. 
And so when that happened, it was just like, I'm, I'm done with talking about perseverance and endurance. It's, it's all healing at this point. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to do is that anymore. So uh, that journey from the alcoholism and seeing God in a different light and just doing his will got me to a point where I was close enough to hear him say that and me to react. Yeah. And I, I think that's so important because there's many times, and, and this was something actually I talked to you about, uh, there's many times to where we accept the things that are happening to us or the things that we have, and we almost label them as this is something that I'm always going to have to deal with. But when we read the word, and even when you look at Christ, when he was here and he was in his ministry and walking, he was he was basically healing people left and right. And, and there was no limit to who he was. People with mental illness, people with yes. the guy that had been blind since birth, the one with the issue of blood. I mean, it yes. was, there was no limit to, and, and, and even they talked about the person that was out of their mind. God was Christ, and we know it's God as well, but Christ mm -hmm. was just healing people left and right. And that just really speaks to how, mm -hmm. how one, one, we need to change the way we pray. Yes. Uh, because we have to remember who God is. And, and, and one of the things that we talked about uh, in the Bible study was about having knowledge, um, having knowledge, understanding who and what you're fighting, how all the things that we deal with uh, in this physical realm on earth is a result of what's happening in the spiritual. And so when you're battling that food poisoning and, and what's happening, that sickness, that infirmity that's coming onto your body, you're battling things in the spiritual realm you're battling mm -hmm. spirits that are behind that. And to know that the power, God has already told us that he's given us power to, to trample over serpents. And, and so yes. we are empowered to um, to be better from those things instead of accepting that this is just something I have to live with. This is something right. that's always going to be a part of me. Exactly. Don't, don't accept that. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, I tell, I tell, if you walk with me, I tell people, I say, I refuse. I mm -hmm. refuse to accept anything less than what God has for me. I don't yeah. care if it's a headache. <laughs> I don't care right. if it's a sore shoulder, if my big toe hurt. I, I right. know that <laughs> because of who God is and the power that he has, we, we have authority, we have power. And because of him, we yes. don't have to walk with those things for the rest of our lives. You don't have to battle yeah. depression for the rest of your life. You don't have Amen. to deal with anxiety for the rest of your life. I don't care Amen. how many ancestors we were battling with it and dealt with it and, and right. back back from when Moses walked the earth you, know, <laughs> you don't have to deal with it that, yes. that's we don't have to deal with it God can deliver you from it amen so, enough of my amen. TED off there on that but uh, yes <laughs> but I, think, I think it's so important that we we know that and then um, Jazz put in here hey Jazz what's going on she put in the chat yeah. she said asking for endurance when I can deliver you with it hands up and the heart <laughs> so, yeah yeah God sometimes God has those one-liners that he be dropping right <laughs> he does it to me all the time it's like he says it then he gets quiet and it's like mic drop right it's like, like oh okay um let, let yeah. me rewire this over here <laughs> it's like because clearly I, my thinking was, was all the way wrong <laughs> right right if you over here yeah, yeah I mean we understand so, the power of God. It's, 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 it's amazing the way we start to walk, the way we start to talk, and the, and the power that is upon us, and the glow that the Holy Spirit gives us to continue to move forward. And to almost in a sense, like when you said, when you know different things will come up, will try to come against you, it's just like boom, boom, boom. It's like, yep, no, no. The, the, things happen to us. No, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, you slack circle those things. Let them just, <laughs> oh, yeah, the matrix just let them glide on past you. Uh, oh, one, yeah. of the things, one of the things that I like that you said, though, was you talked about how uh, after freedom, so get to that place of deliverance, when you realize, okay, God has delivered me from it, you said what you started to do was, the first thing you did was change your surroundings. And so sometimes um, we think that we're strong enough to go back to those places where we came from. Now, right. not to say that God won't send you back to those places because mm -hmm. when you get to a certain point, he may say, hey, now I want you to go and minister in these places. But we have to make sure that we are doing it based on instruction from God rather than our flesh telling us or the enemy may tell you, oh, you're mm -hmm. good now. You can go back to the, to the bar 
And then you mm -hmm. end up stumbling and being right back in that same situation that we were in before. The beautiful thing though, that, that, that is if we do stumble, just like when Kendra talks about, when you talked about your or back and forth. So even when we do stumble, God is still just like the prodigal son. God still opens his arms and say, come on home. Right. Yeah. Right. You, you messed up, but it's okay. Come on home. And so he still forgives us. He still loves us. He's still there for mm -hmm. us. Um, and yeah, then the, and, and even, oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say like, even when all that was kind of like said and done and as God was, you know, starting to show me where he wanted me to be, and I was like, I don't, I don't think he's calling me to, to people who are alcoholics. Um, but somebody had said, somebody had asked me like, well, do you think, you know, he's, he's calling you to that? And I'm like, well, I don't know. But I ended up, I ended up uh, trying this Facebook group out and it was uh, people who are either delivered from alcoholism or who were still struggling. And it was just like an encouragement kind of group. And it was thousands of people in that group. Hear me when I say this. I truly believe that places like um, AA are uh, helpful to your journey of being uh, delivered from alcoholism. But what it also does is it keeps you in a cycle of thinking you're an alcoholic and thinking that you're an addict. So when I went into that group, everybody, even those that were Christians, had that same thought process. And when I went into the group, it literally felt dark and evil. Like it, it was this, it was almost like repel yourself from that, Kendra. <laughs> not that those people were evil, not that they were demonic or anything like that, but it was almost like a weight that I could not deny that that was not my people. <laughs> and so I could have easily tried to say, well, God, I think it is because I went through it and and, and I, don't, I don't even know what would have happened if I would have tried to do it my way. The guy was like, no, I'm not calling you to alcoholics. I'm calling you to Christians who have uh, been wayward in their faith, have dealt with uh, different struggles, and they're trying to move beyond it and, and, and do my work. So when God is calling you to people or certain areas and certain groups, do not do it on your own accord. Do it as he has fashioned you to. Um, because some places are, are, are just not for you and where God has taken you is what, where he will elevate you and, and where the, the ministry that you have and the gifts that you have uh, will be able to supersede anything that you can think of. But do not be in places that you think you can be in, whether it's from a personal space of I can just be there or you're trying to minister to people that you should not be there for. Yeah, and, and I think it's so important because sometimes, like I talked about earlier, we try to carry the label and the shame of where we came from. But understanding that when we give our lives to Christ, when Christ comes into us, he makes us like new. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, mm -hmm. And even where it talks about scripture, it talks about, you know, God even blocks our sins from his memory. And so when right. he looks at you, he don't see you as, he doesn't see her as Kendra, the alcoholic, the, right. or, you know, the, the recover alcoholic. He sees her as who she is. Uh, right. and he sees her as his child. So it's just important that we see ourselves the same way, that we don't continue to carry the burdens of, of the sins that we did, what we went through, because we have been made new. Now, um, exactly. I think that is so, so, so important that we do that. Yeah. The other thing that you talked about too, was you, you mentioned how um, a part of that journey of, of freedom was refocusing on your gifts, the gifts mm -hmm. that, that, that God gave you. And I think that's important as well, because God has given us these gifts for a reason. Right. <laughs> 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 And, and even through her coaching program, when we talked about, you know, there was a point where she had a, a worksheet and had talked about, like, um, learn about who you are as a leader and stuff like that. And I didn't realize at that point that a lot of the things that I was doing in work, like at my job, I was always in leadership, even when I was trying not to be, I was always in leadership. <laughs> I was always presenting literally every role that I've had at work. I've had to present. Look at me now. I'm in front of y'all speaking. And so I said to say that a lot of the gifts that God has given you, uh, he's given them for you to use, but not only yes. for yourself, but also to use for his glory. And so you notice that in her process of being free, but then walking in freedom was she uh, focused on refocus on using that gift and yours was what poetry uh writing you know writing mm -hmm. probably taking some notes 
Um, right. <laughs> you know, Kendra, Kendra is skilled over here, but her, <laughs> she had a, a, a lot of gifts that you were able to refocus on. And not only just the gifts, but refocusing on kind of those things that God spoke to you that he wanted you to go do. Yes, yes, because I, if, had I not gone back into the, the writing and just the, the basics of what I believe like that he wanted me to do, I, I would not have gotten back to, I would not have gotten to the book. <laughs> right. Like getting back to being disciplined and writing the song, like got me disciplined. So when God gave me the book, I wrote the book, you know, and I wrote yeah. the book in less than, in two months and it was published in less than six months. And I'm not, and I'm, I'm not a, a journalist. <laughs> You know, I didn't go to school for literature or, you know, any of that. Um, so I was a manager in retail at the time. So uh, when God, you know, was showing me exactly what he, what he wanted me to do, like that literally from from the book, then when the book came, it was poetry. Because in my mind, my mom was like, you're going to, you need to write a book. And I was like, I ain't writing no novel. But <laughs> just, just, just think about this. Songwriting led God, led me to do it how God wanted me to do, which became a poetry book. Mm. So you see how God was using this, this same rhythm with me, which is different, but it was like, oh, okay. The poetry is like coming out of the songwriting. And then the poetry books had um, questions to go along with it to reflect. And then I'm like, all right, God, what should we do with this? And that's how the coaching program um, was, was bred. So, you know, wherever, wherever, hallelujah, <laughs> use what God has given you D don't think that you're, you know, at a cap, you know, he's literally showing you what you can handle right now. And then you just keep moving forward and moving forward and moving forward. And even now, I wouldn't even say my gift is writing. I'm just wise. God is, the Holy Spirit has give, gifted me wisdom. And it yeah. comes out when I write. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, God just continues to show me exactly what he wants me to do, how he wants me to do it. But little by little, by little, by little, if you just listen and do these gifts I mean it, it, it's just amazing how God just continues to move it forward and actually gives you new gifts <laughs> yeah. in the process yeah and I see here uh Tori hey Tori good to see you hey uh, you said very true it's it's like never being delivered or being made new so she was referring to what we're talking about how uh you don't have to carry that pack sin that God has freed you from yes so, so yeah so the the last um, question that I have for you for today uh, before we wrap is uh, so what advice do you have for someone so if someone um, in, in, and I'll read some of the questions that are coming in but but what, what is the advice that you have for someone if they're in a place to to where they uh, have a strong call they're in a situation they're battling addiction you know whatever it is uh, what advice would you have for that person First thing I will say, what you're going through is not the end. What you're going through is momentary. What you're going through is a season. Um, and seasons are fluid, which means after some of the crazy, it's always going to be a little sunshine. <laughs> and yeah. so what's happening with you right now, it is a season, but it doesn't have to be your, your life. Um, and if you actually just start to realize like you're not God, you can't yeah. control things, you cannot dictate things and it's going to go well when you start to really humble yourself. And if you humble yourself and literally just read one chapter a day and take 15 minutes out of your day, your life will be forever changed. Mm -hmm. When you read that scripture, when you pray, when you write out your you write out your notes, not just reading the scripture, but writing some notes so you can remember and get that infused in your mind every single day. As I as I tell my, my coaching clients, is a win. Stop being in the past. Stop being in the future. Focus on what God is helping you to do today. Small little bites will get you to this. <laughs> Yeah, literally every single day is you getting 1% better, 2% better, 3% better, 4% better. And before you know it, you 365% better in one year. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, yeah, just continue to humble yourself. Um, read God's word and it's not the end for you. God does not see you in time. He sees you outside of time. Yeah. Ooh. All right. 
So we have, <laughs> that was good. We have a question from Javonna. She said, were there any, um, Javonna, did you want to ask your question or do you want me to read it for you? You can ask it if you want. It's not already, okay. It says, were there any specific prayers that you can think of that you have asked God to help you recognize your gifts? Um, no, if anything, the, the, the prayers were for me to humble myself and to actually do what he wants me to do. I truly believe that that within itself showed me what to do. Um, I believe that listening to God and saying, oh, I, well, I know I like to write. I know God, you, I, I was writing songs when I was younger. I ain't wrote none in about 10 years. So it almost started to naturally, sometimes we don't even understand the gifts that we have because they're natural. It, some of those things that may be natural gifts, some that may be spiritual gifts, <laughs> right. like what, what are those things? Because if you actually work those things, God will continue to shift and transition you to the thing. <laughs> uh, so if anything, yes, you can ask God to show you your gifts, but ask God to continue to keep you humble and in his word long enough for you to just see it and for you to believe it and to understand like, Sometimes we know the gift and we don't even believe that's the gift. Yeah. Um, so that could be the thing as well. Um, but yeah, I would say whatever you believe that God is doing in you or has for you, or you're like, I believe it's this, just start there. <laughs> um, but I didn't have any specific prayers. It was literally for me to just do God's will. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. See any other questions here? And so the, I guess the last thing is how can people find you? Um, you know, what's, what's your digits? <laughs> but, but no, how can people find you? Uh, it, 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 <laughs> um, so, <laughs> right. <laughs> on Facebook, you can find my profile is Kendra Dublin. Um, my Facebook page is God's Perspective for Me, which is the ministry name, company name, business name, whatever you call it. Um, on Instagram, I am Kendra Dublin, but if you just put in Kendra Dublin, um, it, I will pop up. Um, and then my website, Kendra Dash Dublin. If you just if you just put in Kendra Dublin um, Christian Life Coach, my website will pop up. Um, and then YouTube, Kendra Dublin as well. So um, on YouTube, I do have you know quite a few um, teachings of the preparation stage of getting your mind right, your ministry right, and um, actually presenting that ministry and walking in the ministry um so yeah you can find me on on any of those places um and then of course for those of you that are in the bible study amongst friends i can put it in in the group as well yeah yeah well thank you so much for for taking the time today um there were a lot of nuggets that i wrote down on my paper that i'm scribbling over here and a lot of good things you shared and i i, I think it's just beautiful how um being in the place you were but but um, through your obedience and through your submission to God, it, it led to where you are today. And I'm pretty sure even you know today, if you look back, you know, one, you recognize where you came from, but also um, I'm, I'm pretty sure at this point, you didn't think that you would have done as much as you've done with the books and everything that, that God has oh, done. So not it, not it, at all. <laughs> yeah. And, and one thing I want to say too, it, it also speaks to, you don't have to have the background in it. She said that she didn't have the background in writing and so forth, but you can see through her her um, submission to Christ to where he showed her what to do, what to write, and um, yeah, and it flowed that way. So yeah, and I'll say this too, like all the clients that I've had, they've, they've decreased or stopped going to their counselors. That That's just the power of the Holy Spirit literally like giving me this program <laughs> and me just listening and just writing it uh, because it, it just really gets to where it pulls out what needs to be pulled out to draw in what needs to be drawn. In. Um, so again, you, you just never know where God is going to take you. I've been picked up by cops. Um, I have been uh, drunk to the point where I don't know how I got home other than the angels brought me home. Like, so, you know, yeah. just from all of that to now, it's just like, wow, like God, this is why I call my journey the 360 journey. God is just fully changed me into something that I have never believed and even what I do now to me is like still base level <laughs> you know I'm yeah. headed towards phase three but I'm like I know there's about 50 phases because even this <laughs> yeah. uh, isn't enough 
so I just praise God and I thank you, um, Mel, for um, listening to God because um, when we were working together, when we were in month, when month four started, week 16, I believe, was when God was telling her that she needs to start a Bible study and have it online. And this is a, a year, year and a half later that she is continuing to do what God told her to do. And she was only, re she had only read the Bible at that point in her adulthood for th three months. Which means, she, and he asked her to start a Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, I don't know where you may be in your life right now, or you feel like, well, I'm not gifted enough. I don't have enough expertise. That, even that's a lie from the enemy because the Holy Spirit is the expert in everything and all things. Mm. Um, so the Holy Spirit will give you everything that you need any given moment, any given time to do the work. And if you are listening, all you just pull that stuff together, all of a sudden you don't know where it's going to, to lead. So I, I, just, I just pray that all of you realize the gift that you have in Holy Spirit to be able to move forward. Yeah, thank you for that. I, I actually forget about that. You know, I was, I was a few months in, I had a group of five people when I started this, um, one of them is on right now, but had a small group of folks and I just text people. I was like, Lord, and I remember I asked you, I said, what am I going to teach? <laughs> you, said, you said what you read and you said, God is going to give it to you. So just know that for, for everyone watching, regardless of where you are, what you're going through, what God asked you to do, because sometimes when God asks us to do stuff, it seems like a, a tall mountain, like, I don't have the experience, I don't have this and that, but know that if you trust him through the process, if you lean on him, uh, Holy Spirit is the knower of all, and he's going to give you everything that you need to, to walk uh, in that in that calling that he has for you. So, KW, can you pray us out for today? And we have some other, hey, Sharon, good to see you. Um, I'm trying to see if we have any other comments here. I uh, see my cousin's on, hey, cousin. But it, can, you, can you pray us out and, and just pray for those who maybe they're in a place they don't know what their stronghold is yet, or maybe they, they know it, they're in that back and forth phase, or maybe they just got to a place of freedom. Uh, do you mind praying for them? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for allowing us to be together and come together uh, to be able to hear another story of your redemption your story to heavenly father because our testimonies are are your story dear god i just thank you for um allowing us to be here as long as we have and you being patient with us as long as you were for us to come into what you have called us to dear heavenly father there are people right now and later on that will see this broadcast that just don't believe that you are true that just don't believe that they can be healed uh, that just don't believe that your word is true and that they can move beyond where they are, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, your Holy Spirit, just bring your Holy Spirit uh, upon them um, so that they realize and understand and that they get the revelation uh, that not only that you are true, um, dear Heavenly Father, but that they can move beyond and live beyond where they are. And as they live beyond where they are, they don't have to worry about what, what's going to happen or what people are going to say or uh, who, who the ministry is for, dear Heavenly Father. You have already prepared it for them, dear Heavenly Father. So whoever is in a bad space, whoever is in darkness, whoever is trying to figure it out, God, give them clarity, uh, give them peace. Take away anything that is negative. Take away any evil spirits that are upon them that should not be there to Heavenly Father. Cast out anything and any anything in their minds that is that is taking them from you, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, and we, we know that you can do it because you are God. You have created everything, dear Lord. So do as you have said, do as you have promised um, to your people um, and, and bring them into a place where they recognize you, that they don't serve any other gods, dear Heavenly Father. That they realize you have called them to something different and better. Dear Heavenly Father, there's somebody that is just battling uh, within themselves to move forward, dear God. Help them to see that it is not the end, God. Help them to see that there is light uh, that is surrounding them that they're, that they're not able to see. But give them a, 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 a whisper in their ear, dear Heavenly Father, 
so that they can actually see what has always been there, that you are present, dear God. We just thank you for your love. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for the gifts that you have given us to continue to move forward, dear God. We just thank you for leaving us your Holy Spirit to move forward, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you for everything uh, that Melinda is doing. We thank you for um, allowing us to see every single person on this call, um, Tasha, Shonda, Margie, Giovanna, and I'm just going to say the number 919-749-0633, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you for what they're going to do, dear God, because although we don't see it, although we don't know, you see it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, you see it. And I just thank you for allowing us to be in ministry together one day, dear Heavenly Father, for us to be able to help people and to help souls and bring them to God as we are continuing um, to allow you uh, to, to fight this fight for us, dear God, as we continue to stay in your word. I just thank you uh, for the journey, and I thank you for everything that you have done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And I want to pray for you real Amen. quick. Amen before we end and sorry she gave your number out to people that's up here but hopefully nobody right. took it. <laughs> it's <laughs> time <laughs> no worries and um hey michelle i got my my um my school of profit folks up here watching as well hey y'all yeah. hey, yes. but i want to pray for you real quick and then we'll wrap um so if you all can just uh touch an agreement with me as i pray over kendra as she continues to walk in the calling that God has for her and he's doing some some um shifting in her life but some amazing things so I just want to pray over her dear heavenly father we just thank you for this day Lord thank you for um Kendra's testimony God and, and her heart for you we just pray that as she moves forward God that you'll continue to guide her her footsteps Lord that you'll continue to bring her the people across her path that she used to reach and Lord I just pray that as she spend time with you, Lord, that you'll give her even deeper revelation of your word, God, that, that as she hears from you, Lord, that you'll give her the exact place, the exact time um, that she is to do things, the places that she's to go. Lord, I just pray even as, as she's in her busy season right now, Lord, we thank you for uh, restoration. We thank you that she'll be able to rest when she needs to rest. She'll have the focus when she needs to focus. God, she'll be um, productive in those moments she's supposed to be productive. But we just thank you for everything that you're continuing to do in her life, Lord. We pray that you bless her, that you increase her, you increase her yes. territory, Lord, that you increase her finances, God, mm -hmm. that you just, just um, overflow in her life with blessings on blessings, Lord, because of, even just because of who she is, the heart that she has, the, the way that she serves people, God, and just the way that she's dedicated to you. So we thank you so much for, for her and everything that she's doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So thank you all for joining. Uh, Amen. Bible this week. Um, we are, so for those who don't know, this Bible study group is public, is open. Come, 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 come to it. <laughs> Come see us. Yes. So we do have Bible study every other Wednesday right here on Facebook, as well as you can see, I have people here on Zoom. Uh, so we have Bible study every other Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know I have folks all over. And, and you know what? God is a blessing because because of the con connection since I've gone, we now have people that are on the West Coast. Paula, who's doing it right now, she's in California. We got yes. people that are uh, in New Mexico that join. Um, I know there's other states that I, I think people in Texas and all over the place. So I just want to thank God for for just us being able to come together, learn about God, be vulnerable. Because, you know, it's one thing if, if you all haven't watched my Bible studies and videos, we keep it real. Uh, we, we all have different challenges and, and struggles that we go through. With, but that's how you grow. Is one you have to be honest with yourself about where you are because God can't work on this if you're not honest with this. So yes. check us out on, on Facebook. Bible study amongst friends is the name of the group. Uh, yes. Side of Bible study, I do have morning devotion and prayer every Monday and Wednesday morning at 7:30 a.m. I will tell y'all I'm not a morning person, but I get up for the Lord. So we, yes. we <laughs> to, to just pray and share a word from God. 
And so I love you all. I know I've kept you much longer than usual, so we're over an hour now, but I appreciate each of you. And um, Giovanna, I see you have your hand raised. You, you have a um, question or comment? Sorry, <clears throat> really quick. Um, I just got a message from um, um, Nigel. She was trying to unmute, uh, but she wanted to say, she wanted me to tell you all that it was such a very good uh, message. And so she was glad that she was able to join when she did. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that, and also, as I mentioned, share. So I'll post the recording for those who joined late or who have missed it. I'll have the recording. Um, it'll be on the Facebook page. I'll post it in my page as well. And for those who are uh, uh, on the email chain, I'll email you the link so that you can you can rewatch the whole video. You're going to want to rewatch it because it certainly was a lot of good nuggets in it. But um, as I mentioned, share, 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 share it. Let's get the word out. And then the last thing that I'll say is, as you know, a part of Bible study amongst friends is fellowship. I love yeah. to eat. I'm sure y'all love to eat. So we will have an outing coming up. So be on the lookout for either an email, if you're with me, an email or a, a post, because I'm going to put some potential dates. Uh, it will be in Raleigh. So for those who are outside of the state, I won't have anything yet for you all. But I will say in the December time frame, we do do uh, volunteer. And so you will have the opportunity to participate then um, once we because we usually do it with like the, the Women's Center here in Raleigh. So you'll have an opportunity to participate and send some items. But yeah, be on the lookout for that vote because we all gonna hang. We're gonna talk about God. Yes. We're gonna love on each other. And yes. yes. All right. Well, thank you all for joining, and I'll see you all later. I gotta ask you something before I want everybody gets off. <laughs> okay.